name is Pushpesh. I'm part of uh, Wipro Limited, and here's my team. We are uh, uh, a strong base of around 5,000 employees here and still counting. Uh, my question is to the entire panel, and uh, this question is more focused towards what would be your suggestion, and this can depict by any one of you, what would be your suggestion, your input on how to deal with the cultural challenges in the, in the office, at workplace, the regional differences, the gender differences. <coughs> so anyone who can you know, throw more light on, uh, on this subject, ensuring that people who are uh, still in the phase of growing and aspire to be at your level, if it, you know, I'm, I'm sure it'll uh, uh, do wonders. Your input would uh, uh, certainly help them. Yep, thank you. I think there's nothing that replaces uh, education. So I think you, you just have to try and understand what that other culture, where they're coming from. So usually when we have visitors come from whatever country we're supporting, one of the things I like to do in Manila and in Cebu uh, is to give them an understanding of the culture of the Filipino. Because whatever positive and negative, whatever it is, our traits are our traits. There, there are national traits, they're Philippine traits. They have to understand the background. While we're selling our services in the BPO industry, Wipro, and we're doing it for the world, they have to understand us. So I do a cultural tour. I ask my team always to do a cultural tour. The same way we ask them to understand us, we have to also do the same effort put the same effort into try to understand our colleagues, whether they are colleagues from other countries or they're customers from other nationalities. And there's so much material out there that I'm sure Grace can also speak about. There's so much material into cross-cultural training. Invest in that. Invest in that because it's not something that is innate. We're not going to understand other cultures unless we learn about them. So. That's what I would say, my two cents. All right, uh, maybe for me it's about um, equipping yourself, uh, being objective. If you want to express something or really fight or um, pursue something, you have to um, establish data. And you have to explain it in a very nice way, in a professional way, and you have to be consistent. If you really um, want to achieve something, you just have to pursue. Again, it may not be very easy because of the perception, cultural thing, but you just have to be consistent. We have almost 2,000 employees, and we also have Indians at the office, different nationalities. When culture is a very, very good point, another thing that we do if you have employees, <clears throat> mostly if they have adherence problem, you really have to sit down with them. You have to let them air out their problems. They're not expecting you to help them. They just want to be heard. The moment they feel that somebody is on board, you'll be surprised, everything changes. So it's just about being heard, being understood, but that doesn't mean that because you have a lot of problems at home and you're allowed to be absent tonight or you don't wanna go to, to work tonight because um, you're just sleepy. You also have to let them know the, the core value of the company. No matter how good you are, if you're not at work, what's the point? So you have to let Filipinos, you have to always instill to them. Um, in Cebu, we have a different also culture compared to Manila. Manila is a very, very busy uh, city. I lived there for 10 years in University of the Philippines, Quezon City. I had to go uh, get up at like 4 a.m. so I could work in Makati at like 9 in the morning. It's the discipline that's lacking. You just really have to push it a little bit. But you have to hear their problems. And then so far it's very effective with us. I hope it helps. Um, can I add a little something? <laughs> anyway, um, I'm a cross-cultural psychologist and I, I, in my office where I worked, we deal with many nationalities, French, German, and um, Spanish. Anyway, the way we deal with it is number one, you have to inform uh, yourself about the culture of the person you are dealing with. And, uh, and as far as I'm concerned, over here, when there's someone, for example, an Indian coming to your, con uh, coming to your office, 
Um, in our center, we inform ourselves what is really, including the stereotypes, because many people fall in the stereotypes. What are the stereotypes of an Indian? And will I fall into that judging that he would be in the stereotype? So what are the information you can get about the character of an Indian, for example? And really communicate with the person. The minute the person comes into the office, you, you tell them your expectations of them and who you are. If you're a Filipino, these are the characters of the Filipino. It should be both ways. He should be informed as well as what is a Filipino really. They have their own stereotypes of Filipinos. And before you know it, they reject us because of the stereotypes. So in my cross-cultural counseling, I really study the culture of that person I am counseling. And when I face this person, what is being said, listen, 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 and feel it. Because right there, you will get the confidence, and you'll have a very good worker with you. Um, in JLL, we have this thing called um, diversity and inclusion, and it's being run across Asia Pacific. And in the Philippines, I'm the chair of that. So initially, it was established to really promote women in the organization. But I think in the Philippines, it's not that um, cons it's not that so much of a concern because we have a lot of Filipinas here who are already in that uh, director level or the head of the companies. But in in JLL, um, I deal a lot with multiple um, nationalities, different cultures, but. Like what the speakers here have said, I think we just have to have an open mind dealing with people. Sometimes we have bias um, in our mind. So if we have that, then it's gonna be difficult for us to relate with anyone. Um, I'm lucky because um, also at an early age, I finished my elementary school in Casablanca, Morocco, and I learned to deal with different nationalities. I guess that's why I like to talk to people, meet interesting people, I learn a lot from them. And I found that very useful in growing my career. And also, um, as a woman, I think it's important for, for us to have mentors. Women, we always have to work hard, be better than our male colleagues so that we'll be noticed. Um, yes, as, as I've said earlier, and Carmi shared, no, that if we're be beautiful, we have something between our ears, we can... Uh, get there, but it's not always like that. As a woman, you have to work hard, show them that you can do better, and at the same time, show, um, show them that you're better than your male colleagues so that you'll get the top position. So it's, it's not easy, it's always a challenge, but I think uh, we can do it if we have support, strong support from our families and friends, and have a mentor, like what Ms. Karen said. Mentors, you can look for um, people beside, um, you can have mentors here, they're willing to share their knowledge, so take advantage of that and they will really help you and propel uh, your career. Res respect is a universal value. So it's, it's across nationalities, across sectors, across geography. So uh, this must be instilled at the very, from birth actually. And uh, wherein even parents have to have a lateral relationship with their children. They have to respect the children, have their own opinions and ideas. And this does not mean that when they have their own opinions, they are not, they are, they have the responsibility to be respectful. Uh, I go back to self-worth, which is a natural entitlement that one is born into this world, special, unique, and precious. You don't have to be anything, and so this is what we need to remind everybody, okay? But I go further and add an E, which is empowered. When you, come, when you become empowered, then you, you start to value yourself, and you cannot give what you do not have. So when you start to love yourself, you can love others, okay? So it's, I am super, special, unique, and precious, empowered to become resilient, responsible, respect-filled, and respectful. Well, uh, in my case, I work with uh, different nationalities. Before I was appointed uh, a director of a global group, 
the first thing I said to them, before you accept me here, you have to treat me equal. As a woman, as a Filipina, because I'm the only Filipina in the group. So during my interview, I had to tell them that. And eventually, that was her changes. Now, I've traveled different countries. I attend meetings in different countries in every nationalities. And the only way I survive, it all boils down to respect to one's culture. Whoever, whatever nationality, whatever race we have, we can only survive when we ref respect each other's culture around the world, whatever they have, because it's all totally different. So um, different races, different uh, nationalities, this, different personalities, whatever they have in their own countries. We just have to adapt and respect what they have. And that's what I learn around with every time I'm attend meetings. Thank you. Thanks, Cara. Let me take another spin. Aside from, I mean, everyone was talking about cultural differences. And let me focus on culture, meaning that there is an internal culture even within our company. There's an internal culture within departments. Finance would be this, HR would be this. And so we're, we're just totally different, but unique in one way. And I'd go back to be inclusive, listen, communicate, and provide feedback. Like, Another department won't know that you see them that way if you don't give them that feedback. And same way, like for example in HR, we have our own internal culture, right? Compared to finance, compared to operations. So even in that subculture within the company, it exists and therefore go back to being open, listen, communicate, and I would, um, emphasize to what the others have said, just purely respect. Be accepting of who these people are because you would also like to be accepted for who you are. Bravo. Please, we have a question uh, here. Good day, ladies. Uh, my name is Oliver. I'm proud to be from QBE. My, my question is, um, Obviously, poverty is still a problem in this country. What one advice would you give to a 10-year-old Filipina who's one of 10 siblings, her, par his, her parents cannot bring her to school, but also one day dream to be a trailblazer like, you, like yourselves? Follow your Just dream. Pretend. Okay, that's good advice. Have faith. Follow a model. Learn to love yourself and, uh, and uh, have something to be hopeful about. Dream big and uh, education, very important. You have to study, you have to learn every day. Just like what I said earlier, education is the only ticket. There's a lot of scholarships for those uh, kids. All they have to do is get the good grades and study hard. They'll make it. I have never paid a tuition in my life. It's all a scholarship. She said it already. <laughs> no, fine, no, no. Of course, I have to make a different answer. So um, no, maybe find an ally, find a person who can really help. Um, because of course, there are schools, but there is a person who can really help. There's, there's an angel out there. Yeah, you all said it also. So since I'm the last, I'll say also pay it forward. Even 10 year olds, if you're a 10 year old, how else can you give back? If you're giving back already at that age, you'll be noticed, you'll be rewarded, you'll be educated. Okay, superb answers. A question right here, please state your name, my dear. Yes, good afternoon. I am Maricel from uh, Orm Ormoc, Ormoc Chamber of Commerce. I think if you could study the profile of the attendees here, I think I'm the only person here coming from um, second poorest region in our country. So I consider Region 8, Tacloban or Mok Samar, I think you know the place, as one for me, answered region in terms of uh, bringing their um, great speakers like you to inspire women like me. 
And I believe that here in Ormoc particularly, we are only few. I'm a member of Ormoc Chamber of Commerce, and we are only few women. That's why I'd like to take this opportunity to invite you personally to join us and inspire women, because I think through this kind of uh, forum, we'll be able to uh, calibrate you know, the women and then start uh, creating a positive impact, particularly that our place really needs active uh, leaders. So that's one. Second, and I hope, I'd like first to thank Rebecca. Rebecca is um, a new mentor, probably, so we need to talk a lot because he, he, she will be visiting Ormoc tomorrow, and I'll be personally accompanying her there. And we will have also the same, but it's just a two-hour forum. Um, I am also a mother, and I have this advocacy on uh, rural um, development. I am into inclusive growth. And as early as now, I have kids, and I have not, not kids, but teens. I'm trying to influence them, but I do not, I do not know if it's right to brainwash them or to influence them or to change their mindset of getting a lot of, uh, for example, experience, get the best education, but go back to our place and serve uh, our dear Ormoc. Because Ormoc is a place of beautiful people. Our mayor is Richard Gomez and also visitors there. <laughs> but anyway, I, I don't know what's your take on that. Um, uh, mindset that I have uh, in my children. Maybe one or two mother can answer. Thank you very much. Oh. What, what's your name again, dear? I am Maricel. Maricel, Maricel you know, every, values, and you're speaking about a value, right? Values are caught, not taught. So by your example, their world will change, not by your opinion. That's it. So there are things that you will uh, encourage, and that's something. That's something that, uh, for instance, uh, I don't want to call it a bribe, but certain things that you will maybe just even verbal, uh, verbal reinforcement or approval or appreciation when they come to do something with you, in or mock. That's it. Example, not opinion. Marisa, let me chime in. You know, my kids did not like Baguio at all. So every time we would go home and I would bring them, they find it boring. But as they grew up and you expose them to what is there in the city, then the older they get, they get more appreciative of what is there from my roots. You know, like I really take pride. And expose them early. And probably what you can do is have them, because that's what we also did, was have them go and serve community. Like you can go into a feeding program, or you can have, let's say, a Christmas party for the ultra poor, but have the children be there. Because that there, you, you build that spirit of not only realizing what Ormoc has, but also the experience of giving back. Because without Ormoc, your children will not be there, right? So, yeah, get them involved. First hand experience will teach them. Very good. There's a question here. Yes, good afternoon. I'm Richard Ramos of Expat Newspaper. I would like to comment that the Many women nowadays would like to complain maybe and grumble that they don't have enough opportunities and so on, that they're discriminated against at work or maybe the men get all the, well, the fringe benefits and the opportunities. But would you know, I'd like to pose this question, not to you but to the audience. Where does the Philippines rank when it comes to female opportunities in the workplace? Technically, it might be number two because they said Russia is number one. But many say Russia is not really in the Asian continent. Okay? So Philippines is actually number one. That's why you see women all over the place in any and every profession. So congratulations, women. Now, my question is, can be very sensitive, okay? 
knowing that you talk about respect in the workplace and wherever whatever country you go you demand the respect and the attention however in some countries it can be quite sensitive especially in the middle east okay and in japan where women are not really as regarded as highly as men, especially in the workplace. And of course, sometimes you deal with unwanted attention. Okay, you're experts in that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering, how did you handle such discrimination and unwanted attention from the opposite sex? And our spokeswoman. <laughs> I, will, I will speak for myself. I'll speak for myself because I have been a medical rep for 10 years. Um, I have been talking to doctors. Um, right now in Healthway, I still face doctors. And it's not so easy to be beautiful. <laughs> yeah, you can relate, right? No, but you just have to be, um, you just have to remain professional. Ignore, ignore those things. And if you have to elevate, elevate it to your boss. Um, because it has to be like that. You have to, um, they need to learn a lesson. Like when I was a medical rep, I deleted doctors. And when my boss asked me, why did you delete? They, they, these are top doctors. I said, um, I, I, I can't hit my quota without talking to them. So you just have to be very professional about it. And then um, don't be afraid to speak out. Go to the HR, tell the HR or whatever, so um, yeah, because no one can make you um, feel you know inferior or whatever without your consent. So in Aspired, we have the retention talk. If employees hands in a resignation, automatically it goes to a retention talk. So we hear a lot of their views while they're leaving, and sometimes we're able to let them stay. It's just because sometimes they feel they're not heard. It's just communication, letting them understand. And sometimes after retention talk, um, let's say this employee can't really stay because for some, like, the reasons we cannot control. Um, after they process their clearance, again, there's another interview. It's the exit interview. That's very common in a BPO industry and a lot of companies. I'm not sure if the government does that. The purpose of that is for us to get a feedback from the employees and allow us to improve as a company. So if we th hear things that we need to improve on, automatic. One thing that's good is because we're a private company, we can implement changes right away. Um, if something that we feel, I have an employee that we have an Indian, where's the Indian from Wipro, um, went to the office for a check on the ISO certification. And then he asked our employee, and this employee is an LGBT, and then we respect that a lot in the workplace. And then he asked the employee's name, and the employee want, wanted to be call, uh, called Pearl, but the real name is different. So our employee felt so uh, disrespected, but I had to explain to the auditor that you just have to be a little respective and a little sensitive. So it's the same thing that what we do with all the women as well, all gender. Uh, we give them the freedom to go wherever toilet they want to go. Um, I think it's very important that we have to support them. In my case, um, when I got into the global world, uh, my first question, the first question they asked me, what can you do as a woman? You're not even an engineer, you're an accountant. You're going to be running an engineering company. And my answer was, what do you know about the Philippines? I know the Philippine market, and I know I can sell the business. So eventually, uh, for the last two years, I challenged them that if I cannot lift this business up in two years' time, it's yours. I had less than 50 people in the company, and in two years' time, it climbed up to more than 200. And uh, that begins the journey of RLB Philippines and all eyes on us. And you can see the men, you can see every meeting, how you gain that respected drowning on you. So, I mean, you, sometimes you have to show them an experience to earn that respect. Then I have to show them that I can steer the wheel. That's all I can do. What advice would you give to the younger gals about men in your life? Are they worth the hassle? 
Uh, what can you do to keep the mentor? Okay, Sheila. So find a supportive partner, a partner who is also brave enough and, and not insecure, and who will support you because if your husband or your boyfriend or your partner is insecure, he will not let you achieve great things in life. And you need someone who will take the half because you're a working mom. So you have to do so many things, right? So if your husband is not supportive, is not taking care of the kids as well, when you can't, then it's not going to work. It's a partnership. So for me, I think that's it. You have to find the right partner who will understand you, who will love you, who will cherish and respect you, and who will be very happy with all your achievements in life. Okay. Let me answer. Um, I have been married for 30 years, <laughs> not 13 years. Okay, um, one good thing is that um, we, we have, we, we, we uh, women um, should wear two hats. Like if we are the voice of the boardroom in, the, in, in our own home, I listen to my husband. It's kingship. I submit, I, I submit to my husband. Not, not all the time, but, uh, <laughs> but um, it, it's, um, it's like you make the person feel important because the fact that you show intelligence, superiority, you need to balance things out when you're at home. I'm in a very good position here as a marriage counselor, actually. And one of the things I would say, I commend the men who are here today. You are very brave <laughs> to come to a woman's meeting. But one of, one of my most popular workshops is what is, it's not the difference between men and women, but the otherness of a man and the otherness of a woman. Because we don't have to be different, we don't have to be the same. So let me, just give me five minutes of this, because this is kind of interesting and I think you will like this. When I talk about the otherness of men and women, I always start from the caveman. And this is very basic and understanding a man and a woman. It, during the time of the cave period, the man was the hunter and he goes out to look for the food. And the woman stays in the cave to take care of the offspring. Okay, how does this work? In modern times now, the woman, I mean, in the cave time, the woman stays around the cave and look for the berries for their food. And the man goes out to hunt for their um, provisions. And how do you translate that in modern times? The man now is the breadwinner and the bread earner of the family, and he goes out of the house to look for the food. In modern times, now, the women looking for the berries are shopping. And so if you understand this background, you don't have to put down the... Many complaints of, of those in my marriage counseling is that the, the wife is always shopping. Why is she shopping? Why is she spending our money? So I explain this, that this is just a kind of an evolution into modern times of gathering berries. And it's not necessarily negative, because when she was alone in the cave, when she was gathering berries, that was therapeutic. So if we go shopping, we feel good. But of course, it all is a matter of, you know, keeping within means. Now, the other thing about the breadwinner, and I said, if you will understand that the man is the breadwinner in the family, never, never put down his earning capacity. Never, never, that's why in the, in the grassroots, they're always fighting because the wife says, bakit ang pobre pobre natin? Hindi kasi, hindi kasi nagtratrabaho. That's really a in the heart of the man, because to him that is very important. So the men here, I'm sure, will agree that if a woman will appreciate, you come home and you appreciate that they had a hard day instead of whining, they will like that because in a way, they will appreciate that. Because in a way, you understand their earning capacity. And I, I, that's what I'm, I'm trying to say about if you understand the background of a man and a woman, I think a marriage is, has a very good chance of work and respect each other's differences. I would just like to, I think, disabuse everybody's mind that this is not really a, a woman's forum and only for women. I think everybody's very inclusive here on stage and it is he for she and she for he. he. We have to coexist very, very well in, in harmony. And, uh, but my advice to the young women there is to get yourself financially strong, 
and also to be mentally tough. And that doesn't mean arrogance. It actually means humble confidence because you cannot give what you do not have. Also, women, they hold half the sky. Actually, they hold more. And truly, we laugh about being CEO, which is entertainment officer. I would say women are CEOs, naturally. Chief everything officer. Yeah. CEO, chief everything officer. You are a, a daughter-in-law, a daughter-outlaw. Everything, you know, a, a mother, a, a, a mother, a stepmother, a best friend, a, daughter, a lover, uh, whatever you, uh, et cetera. So women really need to be strong because they're really the ilaw ng tahanan. There's this no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Um, you know, it's even a biological design that try being pregnant, sweetheart. <laughs> you know what I mean? Very, that, I mean, really and truly, that alone, that alone, uh, is exactly noble. I think that's the word, and sacred. But please a hand for our lovely and intelligent gals.